So I have been living in the city of Las Vegas for nine months now. And I thought I'd give you guys an updated perspective on my thoughts or maybe things that you guys should know before moving here if you are considering that. Now again, a lot of this is gonna be personal preference. Some people are gonna love what I have to say, some people are gonna hate it, but it all just depends on who you are as a person. When I first moved here, I remember my dad telling me, Zach, you're not gonna like living there. It's gonna get too damn hot. It's 105 degrees outside, I got a hoodie on. Yes, it gets hot, we know that. It's the middle of the desert, which brings me to my first point though. I feel like if you're gonna live here, especially during the summer, you need to try to adapt to being a morning person. And this is honestly my favorite part. My apartment faces towards the east, so at 5.30, that sun is up, shining through my window, and from 5.30 to 10.30 is like the most productive part of my day. I can get everything done in five hours and have the rest of my day set. But if you're not a morning person and you're not gonna wake up until 10 and it's already 100 degrees, probably not gonna be able to do anything outside, which is why people complain, oh, it's too hot. You should have woke up earlier. You should have got all the stuff that you need to get done outside early in the morning and then you have the rest of your day and you can go be inside and the heat won't be a problem. Heat's not an issue. My apartment, I don't even have the air conditioning on right now, honestly. It's 82 degrees. Yes, that is slightly hot, but like, I'm not uncomfortable. When I was in San Diego, my apartment was so old and the ventilation in there was so terrible and we did not have air conditioning. I promise you it got way hotter inside that apartment than here. So yeah, the heat doesn't bother me at all. I love it, early mornings, perfect weather, late afternoon, perfect weather, 9 p.m. You can go walk outside with shorts and a t-shirt. And that's honestly, that's honestly one of my favorite parts. Number two, this is my own personal mistake. I shouldn't have moved next to a freeway. It is not the biggest deal in the world because this is not a very busy freeway, the 215, but just why? <laughs> like there's really no benefit to living right across the street from the freeway. The freeway entrance is not even right here. Like you gotta drive a little bit down the street, but if I could redo it, I would move uh, a little bit further back towards the west if I wanted to live in a more suburban kind of neighborhood. Now, number three, I do wish I would have moved closer to the strip. Now, it comes with a bit of pros and cons. I feel like the neighborhoods, Summerlin area, the west side of Vegas is way more new, way more low key. There's not as many people here, but I think living in Las Vegas, it would have been so dope to have a view of the strip. Now, obviously it's also gonna cost a little bit more, but I think I would have got much more benefit living closer to the strip. Being on the strip during the weekdays is super nice. It's way more mellow, way more low key. I don't really like going to the strip on the, on the weekends anymore, honestly. It's just like, it's jam packed with people. You can't even walk, especially now, because everybody's coming back to Vegas. But I think what would have been really cool is like going for a morning walk on the strip. There's nobody there like on a Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. That would have been really cool. Personally, I think I just would have got way more value out of that rather than living, you know, closer to the outskirts. And Red Rock is very nice, like I've said before, but I just, I don't find myself going there that often. I'm not a huge, crazy fan of hiking. Like I'll go every now and then, but it's not something that I'm doing on a consistent basis. Whereas I would have definitely been like just walking up and down the strip, go for a morning jog maybe like every day, honestly. And that's just not something that I'm willing to, I'm not willing to drive 20 minutes one way to do that every single morning. So hindsight, I should have moved closer to the strip. That would have been cool. Again, you know, a little bit more expensive. I'm saving a little bit more money this year, but you know, next year, now that especially my Amazon business is going a lot better, you know, that's something I probably will consider though. Next thing that you should know is that if you plan on living here for an extended period of time, get your Nevada license ASAP. This is something that I've slept on entirely. I still don't have a Nevada license. I missed the DMV appointment in December. And then when I showed up to my other one in March, I didn't have the right paperwork. So I got another one next month. Hopefully we can get it right. Third time's a charm. But there's so many perks for locals that I didn't even really know about. I don't know them all, but I know you can get into like some of the pools and stuff for free if you have a Nevada license. Again, I don't know all the perks that you have, but like if you're gonna be living here and you can get those free perks, why not take advantage of it as soon as possible? The next thing, I just had to throw this in there because I've seen some other videos here on YouTube. I've seen videos where people say the people in Las Vegas are assholes. And I feel like the only people who say that are assholes themselves. Like how can you come to the assumption that an entire population of people 
are all assholes just because you met one person that was probably an asshole. That is just like one of the funniest things that people say about moving to a new city to me. I've just honestly never understood it. And I've made a lot of like just friends, like going to the sports book, bullshitting with people on sports. Of course, on the strip, people aren't necessarily from here, but it's just, I feel like if you are a cool person and you are open, you know, to talking to people and making friends, Nobody's gonna be like an asshole for no reason to you. Other than the exception, this one time I was walking out of Chipotle and this crackhead mumbled some shit cause I didn't, I didn't give him money or whatever. And he mumbled some shit to me. But just because he was an asshole doesn't mean everybody in Vegas is now an asshole. That is honestly probably the, one of the biggest myths ever for any city, really. Not everybody here is an asshole. If you think that, you are probably the asshole. The next thing that you should definitely know before moving here is make sure your apartment or wherever you're living has covered parking. Now. Most places have it. I've seen a few that don't. I don't know how people with houses park on their streets. But again, like the summer, the heat, the sun, we get it. It's ruthless. But if you're under the shade parking things, like you're totally chill, you're fine, you can get into your car, no problem. If you park in a spot that doesn't have the covering, it's gonna be hell trying to get into your car. It just is, that's how the sun works. The sun is hot. The sun goes in your car, it's gonna make your car hot. Make sure the place that you're moving to has covered parking, assigned parking for residents. I've never had an issue, and especially at my complex, there's never ever any issues with parking, even though we don't have like assigned spots. Make sure that your place that you're moving to has covered parking for sure. Next thing I have kind of a, a very slight drawback, but on the west side of Vegas, and as far as I'm concerned, any locals that know of like an international grocery store on the Summerlin side, I'm not talking about Trader Joe's, but there are no international grocery stores that are pretty close like to the Summerlin area. Now they have like Trader Joe's, they have a bunch of your normal, like whatever, Albertson, Smith's, Vaughn, stuff like that. The closest Mexican market to me is probably like, it's probably almost 20 minutes called La Bonita. And it's like, again, it's closer to the strip. And I kind of miss that. Coming from San Diego, you can go to like a little carniceria place. And you can get like carne asada. It's already pre-seasoned meat, like chicken, whatever. A Ranch 99 is like an Asian grocery store where you can go and get just a bunch of different foods that you're not going to find in like your normal grocery store. And they don't have that close on the west side. They have them here, but you would have to drive a little bit. And I'm not, I'm not driving 40 minutes round trip, you know, to go get some pre-season chicken. I'll just get some like whatever from a local place. That's like the one very slight drawback that I have about the west side of Vegas. I don't know if there isn't, again, if there's any locals that know of one, like let me know so I can go check it out. The next thing is the one thing that I didn't even really realize before coming to Vegas is that there are a lot of very, very nice parks out here. You're thinking desert, it's just gonna be dirt. There's no parks. They're not gonna bother watering the grass and shit. The closest one to me is called Mesa Park and they have like a bunch of really cool baseball fields out there. They have a ton of outdoor uh, places to play basketball that also have lights so you can play at night during the summertime. Obviously it's gonna get too hot. Nobody's gonna be playing basketball when it's 114 degrees outside, but they have lights so people can play at night and the parks are just, they're just very, very nice. And that's the one thing like, I just honestly, I wasn't expecting Vegas to have many of. But yeah, like if that's your thing, like you're into going to the parks and whatnot, for sure, especially again, like, cause the weather's gonna be very nice, like later in the evenings. You're not gonna need like no snow jacket like you will in San Diego at any time of the year past seven o'clock. That is like a really, you know, cool environment. Even if you wanna just go like chill and read a book, man, they got a ton of, ton of nice parks. I can't stress that enough. The next thing on this list is I wish I would have moved closer to a more of a, a local community gym and not just going to a commercial gym. The closest gym to me, uh, they have a LVAC Las Vegas Athletic Center that I've never been to, but it's like four minutes from me. And then there's the EOS about six minutes from me. The thing about when you're moving to a new city, if you're into fitness, of course, if you're trying to meet new friends, I feel like going to a more, a community small gym would be a really easy way to do that because there's not gonna be many people there. You're probably gonna be more prone to talking to people. Whereas if you go to a commercial gym, there's hundreds and hundreds of people there. Nobody's really trying to talk to each other. You're just trying to get your workout in, get out. So that's one thing I, I, I'm actually in the process of looking for, you know, just a smaller gym. I might go shoot a bunch of content for a gym, just try to make some new friends that way and whatnot. But from what I've seen, there's a lot of them that are like just a little bit closer to the strip. And again, it's a matter of just like, do I want to drive 40 minutes round trip to go to the gym when I'm already at the gym for an hour versus, you know, just going, it's like, EOS is six minutes from me, so it's 15 minutes tops round trip. And just, you know, it saves me a little bit of time. So I don't know, that's one thing. Again, if I move closer to the strip, 
my personal interests at least would be a lot closer to me. Like Red Rock would probably become like a 30 minute drive instead of 15, but then I would be closer to, you know, the gyms and whatnot, closer to the sports books. You know, Red Rock has a really cool sports book, but sometimes it's nice to switch it up, go to different ones on the strip. But like I said, the strip during the week in some parts is way more mellow and I, I like that. Uh, being able to walk around without a billion people there is a cool little vibe, man. And the last thing on this list, I feel like there are a lot of opportunities for content creators out here. This is something that like I've never really gotten into because I have my business on Amazon and I've like always kind of flip flopped, but I might start getting really serious about trying to build up a little side hustle that's also fun, but it's a good way to meet people because I'm new to the city. I've seen, again, like I've been browsing a lot of these local gyms and their social media pages are just like, they ain't really it. They got cool facilities, but you know, if you are a content creator yourself, I feel like you could definitely come in and spice up a lot of their social media platforms. And there's a lot of like influencers and stuff out here as well that, you know, you could probably collab with, connect with, create free content for, get connections, build your network. Um, and yeah, and just even other small local businesses. Actually, as a matter of fact, I reached out to one of the small business owners out here who has like a little print shop and you know, we kind of just collabed. Like I made a video for him and you know, he gave me a discount on some of the merch stuff that I got. So I don't know, I think that is a really good way to meet people for one, which I might do a video on uh, later in the future. But I feel like if you are a content creator, there's still a lot of opportunity out here in Vegas for sure. It's not like LA, like LA, everybody and their mom is a content creator out there, right? But I feel like in Vegas, there's still a lot of opportunity for that. And it's something like, hey, if you're a content creator out here in Vegas too and wanna link up, shoot some content and stuff, that would be cool because I'm definitely, I'm definitely still looking for people to do that out here for sure. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. I can't really speak on like the job market because honestly, like, I'm, I mean, I'm self-employed. I don't really pay attention to that. But I feel like, man, you're self-employed, no state income tax, it's way cheaper to live here. Like, I don't know of like a better place to like be, honestly. Like, you can get past the heat. The heat is like the only drawback. To me, the cold is worse than the heat. The cold in the winter, it gets way, I threw away a lot of my sweatshirts when I moved here because I didn't know it got so cold here. But yeah, that's all I got for this video. If you did get some value out of it, please take a quick second to like the video and subscribe down below. Or if you have any questions, like drop them in the comments below and I'll try to make a video uh, on another topic next week for sure. Next week, I promise, for sure, for sure, I'm gonna make some time. We're gonna go to the strip and do a fun little vlog um, and just show you like what the vibe of Vegas right now is like. Cause it is lit. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a little bit, it's a little bit too lit. Just wait until the next video drops.